Okay, welcome back, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, to a crazy, to, for lack of better words, COVID-19 failed Big Ten college football season. This is, I do believe, week 12, I think, of the regular college football season, but unofficially, I guess you could say, or officially, whatever you want to use, week 5, I believe it is, in the Big Ten football season. Our shortened Big Ten season, unfortunately. And this title is sad to me. Now, I'm not a Michigan fan, but I'm a fan of Big Ten football. And when Michigan struggles, I believe it just is a sort of somewhat of a down year for Big Ten football in general. Michigan is one of those programs that kind of ranks up there with Notre Dame, Oklahoma, uh, Alabama, even of the team, and USC also, of teams that are just such a storied history. I mean, Michigan had so many great years in the 80s under Bo, the 90s under Lloyd Carr, and the early 2000s, even prior to, of course, that disastrous 2007 season. Or was it eight? I can't remember now. But anyway, Michigan has had great seasons, great programs, and to see what they've become this year is just sad to this really could be, as my title suggests, the beginning of the end of the Arbol era in Ann Arbor. But maybe not. Time will tell. This game in particular will tell that story and probably help answer that question. It is number 13, Wisconsin at Michigan. And this is Real Big Ten Football Talk Plus One with Chris. I am Chris, and let us get started, shall we? Items for digestion. Michigan lost to Indiana last week for the first time in 33 years. Again, this is not a good time to be a Michigan fan if you are one. Wisconsin has only played one game due to COVID-19 cases. Very sad year indeed for everyone involved. In sports and in general. I mean, it's just been a horrible year. My heart goes out to all of those who have been affected by this horrible disease or this horrible virus. But the one win, the one game that Wisconsin has played in was a dominating win against Illinois. But Illinois, as we've seen this year, is somewhat of a bottom feeder. 0-3, not a great team, but a good win nonetheless for Wisconsin. We'll look more into that here in a moment. Michigan enters this game with a losing record for the first time since 1988. Folks, I was one year old. I was one. I guess, however you want to put that. The last time this happened, yes, I am 33 years old. I was one year old when Michigan last entered this matchup with a losing record. They've entered this matchup with a 500 record a few times, but not a losing record since 1988. But then, during this matchup and after, they went on to win 8 straight for a 9-2-1 and one record. And I do believe... They, yes, okay, and they went on to win the Rose Bowl that year against USC. Now, boys and girls of Michigan, I don't, well, literally you can't have a season with a record like that this year. One, because we don't have ties anymore in college football, and for another, this season has shortened. The best you can hope for is 6-2 and two at this point. But I digress, let us move on. Again, could this be the start of something special in Ann Arbor? We don't know. But let's look at the tail of the tape. Who have these teams played so far? Again, as I've mentioned, Wisconsin has played one game against Illinois in Camp Randall with a dominating performance, 45-7. to We'll look more at the highlights of that game in a moment. Michigan has had one win so far, one and two. A crushing victory in Minneapolis against the then-ranked 21 Minnesota Golden Gophers, 49-24. But then, that's why we have the title of this video as it is. A loss to Michigan State in Ann Arbor, a bad Michigan State, who has lost their head coach in the beginning of the year, under an interim head coach with a lot of bad, bad legal stuff surrounding that program, still beat a Michigan team 27-24. And then Michigan went to Bloomington last week and got the doors knocked off of them by the 13th ranked Indiana Hoosiers, 38-21. to 
that is the game we are going to look at in our highlight spot or highlight segment with Michigan. But let's look at Wisconsin's victory first. We'll soon see how dominating a performance that Wisconsin had. Boom, there we go. A passing touchdown for Wisconsin. That's going to be a trend we're going to see throughout this clip. Very strange to me that Wisconsin is becoming a passing team. I haven't seen them throw the ball so much since they had Russell Wilson at the helm nine years ago. I think nine years ago. Count, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Wisconsin fans. Either nine or ten years ago when Russell Wilson was there. And again, now this, again, Wisconsin throwing the ball? That's something right there. But then you have one the one miscue of the game really for Wisconsin was a fumble, which wasn't caused by the quarterback. It was a bad, unlucky play, which Illinois capitalized on. This is Illinois' one and only touchdown of the game. Again, throwing the ball and throwing the ball downfield, might I add, for Wisconsin. Very impressive. First down. And Mertz keeps the party going by going hurry up. And scores a touchdown here, I believe, in the corner of the end zone. Oh, nope, right in the middle. A good throw. And another passing play. A big passing touchdown for Wisconsin. 28-7. And here in the fourth quarter, 28-7 still. And that looks more like Wisconsin. Take it up the gut with the big, booming fullback. That was 28-7. This is... The nail in the coffin if it wasn't already over. Anyway, that made it 42-7. to Wisconsin added a field goal to make the final score 45-7. to Not to conclude that because I didn't really feel it was relevant. So let's look at the tail of the tape. Let's look how dominant a performance Wisconsin truly had on paper. Allowing 8 first downs, 20% third down efficiency for Illinois. 131 rushing yards, that's quite a few, but allowed 87 passing yards. It wasn't like Illinois didn't try. They threw the ball 22 times, but only completed eight passes. Eight passes complete out of 22 attempts. That's staggering for me. No passing touchdowns and a pick thrown for Illinois' quarterbacks. 218 yards of total offense Illinois gave up on defense. Illinois committed five penalties for six yards, committed two turnovers, and had the ball this is just insane to me. Illinois had the ball for 16 minutes and 32 seconds, folks. That's dominance for Wisconsin. A bad team, perhaps, in Illinois, but that's a dominant performance for Wisconsin. What did Wisconsin do on offense? 23 first downs, 57.1% on third down. That's 8 of 14. 182 rushing yards. That sounds more like Wisconsin. Only 248 yards through the air, but only attempted 21 passes. Completed 20 of them. At one point, this kid was 12 for 12 passing. I don't know when he finally threw it in completion, but he went 12 for 12 at one point I saw in the clip. Five passing touchdowns for a Wisconsin quarterback. Zero picks thrown. 430 yards of total offense. Not great. But when you score 45, it was really going to complain too much, right? Three penalties for 15 yards. Excellent, excellent performance there. Well disciplined, but did have the one turnover, which we already saw, which was the pass, the catch, and then he fumbled when he went down. An unfortunate play for Wisconsin, but not awful, in my opinion. That was the only touchdown they gave up, and it was a turnover for a touchdown. Dominating performance for Wisconsin's defense. That's a shutout in my mind, even though Illinois scored seven points. Wisconsin's defense gave up zero. Not even a field goal. Wisconsin held on, to the, held on to the ball for 43 minutes and 28 seconds. I'll leave it there. Now we'll look at why Jim Arbaugh's seat is quite warm. We'll say, for lack of better words. Michigan did fight in this game, but we didn't see too, too much of that. We saw a whole lot of Michigan miscues, which on that play, Michigan did jump, or no, I'm sorry, it will be the next play. Michigan did commit one of those multiple, several pre-snap penalties that gave Indiana, there we go, right there on the end. 
free play for Indiana, and they capitalized on touchdown 7-0 Hoosiers. But Michigan did come back on an excellent catch. Not a great throw, but an excellent catch by Michigan's receiver, 7-7. But then another pre-snap penalty and another touchdown for the Hoosiers. 14-7, they went on to score a field goal on the next drive, 17-7. And there is where the dominance starts. Second half, 24-7, Indiana. Michigan trying to scramble, trying to get something going. Excellent pitch and catch by Joe Milton. Two, I'm not sure who that was, but a good pitch and catch. Here is another one of few bright spots for Michigan. This is first and goal. Touchdown, Indiana. And that's 31-14. And here is the beginning of the end for Michigan. Oh, I'm sorry. I take that back. That was their last touchdown. Here is the beginning of the end for Michigan as Joe Milton over... I don't even know who he was throwing that one to. It went right to the Indiana defender. And on third and goal from the two, Indiana scores a touchdown. Michigan really at least could have, I guess for lack of better words, tried to salvage some pride and force them into a field goal there. But they give the touchdown and there was the dagger. Way overthrown ball. Interception, Indiana, and the game was effectively over from that point. Final score was indeed 38-21, Indiana. And this is the tail of the tape, and this is again why our boss seat is quite warm. Miscues and beating themselves is how Michigan got beat badly at the hands of the Hoosiers, As we saw in the video, but let's look at the stat. Michigan. Gained 17 first downs, 27.2% third down efficiency. That's where, that's how you lose games, is not converting on third down. 13 rushing, 13 rushing yards for a Michigan coach team. 13. And it wasn't like they only, you know, ran the ball five times. 18 attempts for 13 yards on the ground, boys and girls. Did get 344 yards through the air, but Joe Milton had to pretty much carry the team on his throwing shoulder. Not fair to ask for a young quarterback in his first year starting. That's not fair for Michigan, but they forced him to try to beat the Hoosiers with his arm, and that did not happen. Only 18 of 34 passing. He did throw three touchdowns, but also threw two picks, both of which were way off on those passes. Michigan only had 357 yards of total offense. Eight penalties for 89 yards. Two turnovers, not horrible, but the penalties definitely helped to drive that nail into the coffin for Michigan. And only held onto the ball 21 minutes and 10 seconds. Unless you are really high-powered, quick-moving offense, that's not how you win games. Michigan is not that means that Michigan just did not do well at holding onto the ball. They got off the field too soon on third down on offense and did not get off the field soon enough on defense as we'll look at Indiana stat line next. 28 first downs Michigan's defense gave up. 50% third down efficiency for Indiana. Michigan's defense gave up 50% third down conversions, folks. 9 of 18. Did only give up 118 yards on the ground, not horrible, but again, you only gained 13 on offense. You did not win the uh, battle up front, Michigan. You gave up 342 yards passing to Indiana. Now, 30 of 50 on passing, you did pretty well to keep them relatively inaccurate, but Indiana's quarterbacks did throw three touchdowns to zero picks. You did not force one turnover. And in the end, only committed four penalties, but 50 yards. Non factor. I always like to include that just in case it might mean something to the scheme of the game for the team I'm talking about. Now, as I, again, as I said, zero turnovers forced for Michigan. And you allowed Indiana to hold on to the ball for almost 40 minutes. 38 minutes and 50 seconds, to be exact. Not a good performance for Michigan. By a large margin. 
So why did Michigan lose? He gave up 28 first downs, 50% third down efficiency. To not a wonderful Indiana team. Good, solid, undefeated. Did beat Penn State. But barely beat Penn State. And really just Indiana has never been a real offensive juggernaut. But you may have looked like it in this game. By bad, bad, bad defensive coaching. Blown assignments, free stamp penalties, all those things crushed you. And not to mention relying way too much on your quarterback to win the game for you. So let's look at Michigan and Wisconsin their last five years. Last year, of course, Wisconsin took or got revenge on the Wolverines 35 to 14 in Madison because in 2018 Michigan did get that very convincing, shocking year, which really helped people to think. Michigan might be back when they beat Wisconsin in Ann Arbor 38-13. A then-ranked 12th Michigan team crushed that 15th-ranked Badger team. But, again, like so many years for Michigan, that year also ended not in a way they wanted. With a loss to Ohio State, of course, 2017. Wisconsin crushed Michigan in Madison 24-10. And 2016, that was a good victory for Michigan, 14-7. to A tough, good game, actually. I'm pretty sure I actually watched that one. Very tough defensive struggle that Michigan did win. That showed that they had fight. They've had fight under Arbaugh. Don't know what's going on this year. And then the last time they played him before 2016 was 2010, prior to the conference realignment where the 7th-ranked Wisconsin Badgers crushed Michigan in Ann Arbor, 48-28. I do believe that was, I think that was Rich Rod. I believe that was Rich Rod's first year there, but I can't swear to it. Again, please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. So, let's look at the keys to the game here. Wisconsin wins if they can keep Mertz, their quarterback, protected in the pocket and allow him to throw Michigan's lights out. Much like he did against Illinois. Win the turnover battle against a defense that forced zero against Indiana. Stay focused just because you are, and I think you're heavily favored, but I think you're only given you're only given three and a half points here. Doesn't mean, but you that doesn't mean that you can play sloppy and still win. I, in my mind, this is a very dangerous Michigan team. This is a desperate Michigan team. You play sloppy, you play badly, you could very well find yourselves on the losing end of this game. And force Michigan into consistent third and long. They're quite good at that. They were quite good at that against Indiana. And shut down their running attack. Again, Michigan had 13 yards against Indiana. I would imagine Wisconsin's defensive front is probably better than Indiana's. So that shouldn't be too difficult for you. Now, Michigan wins if, and there's a lot of ifs, so please forgive me, this list is quite long. They can play to their potential. Play to their potential. You have talent. You must utilize it effectively, which you didn't do against Indiana. Reduce the penalties. Cannot commit eight penalties for 80 yards and expect to beat anybody with a pulse. Doesn't work that way. And especially the pre snap penalties. You cannot give Wisconsin free plays like you did last week against Indiana. You have to get off the field on third down on defense, and you can't allow Wisconsin to consistently convert. On the flip side, you have you need to stay on the field on offense on third down. 20-some percent third down conversion is not going to win you any games again against somebody with a pulse, which Wisconsin very much has a pulse. You have to gain some yards on the ground. You cannot run for 13 yards and expect to really beat anybody with a pulse or not. I don't think you're going to win a scrimmage with 13 yards on the ground against a high school team. You have to get some yards on the ground. Give Joe Milton a little bit of 
leeway so they didn't have to throw the ball for 50, 60, 80 times in a game. You can't, it's not fair to that kid to rely on him so heavily to win the game for you. You have to get some yards on him. Last, or, yeah. Can't win this game by going one-dimensional on offense, like we just said. Last but definitely not least here, you have to pull out your bag of bags of tricks on defense and offense. You are effectively playing for your season now. Not literally, of course, you've got games left after this, but if you really realis realistically want to have a chance at salvaging some sort of a decent, okay, make you feel kind of warm, fuzzy inside type season, you need to win, you need to win now. You need to beat this Wisconsin team. There is a chance. You have a chance. Wisconsin hasn't played in two weeks. Wisconsin is still reeling, I'm sure, from all those COVID-19 cases. They're rested, but are they rested? Are they truly rested, or are they just still trying to recover? You're desperate. You looked like you are playing for a lame duck coach last week. You've got to play with some fire, some passion. You've got to play with a pulse. You're at home. I know you're not going to have the fans like you normally would in, re in really every year, except this one. But you have to go out there. You have to play for your coach. If you care at all about yourselves, your personal pride, your coach's pride, your program's pride, you've got to play hard now. So, who to pick? Who to pick? Obviously, logic suggests Wisconsin's probably going to run away with it. Or throw away with it. Pun intended there. <laughs> so who to pick? I know everybody's saying Wisconsin. And, but it does seem like every time the media picks against Michigan, that game they come out and they just completely pull a 180. And play like they haven't played the whole year. And they did that against this Wisconsin team two years ago. It needs to be that same way for Michigan. The media is going against them. Really everybody in the civilized, in the, in the free world, civilized world, whatever you want to say. Is probably going for Wisconsin. So drum roll. I guess. I am not civilized. <laughs> I must not have much sanity left because I do believe Michigan is going to somehow find a pulse, find their direction, and I do believe Michigan is going to win a very tight squeaker, squeaker of a game, 24-23. to 23. We'll get their season turned or put back on track and give some faith back to these Michigan baseball. Or I might be completely wrong. In my opinion, if I'm wrong, Michigan, like the stats, the paper, everybody else suggests, gets crushed in this game, I do believe Arbaugh is out. Possibly even before the end of the year. This, this could be it for him. He needs to win this one. Michigan needs to win this game for Arbaugh. If they lose, I think they're done. I do believe Arbaugh is done in, in Arbaugh. Which saddens me because, of course, he's a Michigan man. I think he's a good coach. I became a fan of his when he was coaching at Stanford. And then and then for the 49ers. He's a good coach. I don't know what's going on here. But I hope Michigan gets on the right track. That's all I can say. I'm not a Michigan fan. But I hate seeing Michigan in this state. That's all I'll say. Anyway, I'll get, I'll get off my soapbox now. Thank you for watching. Please do like this video if you like what I do. Subscribe. Uh, I think I've only got 12 subscribers. <laughs> I would love to have. I'm not going to put a number on it. I would love to have more because I want to have more conversation. I like talking to people. Please hit me up in the comment section below if you have any questions or input here. I don't get many comments, so I'll definitely reply back to you. <laughs> Please do share this video with your friends. And hit that dislike button if you didn't like the video. Again, please let me know if you didn't like the video and let me know why. Again, thank you for watching.
and be safe out there.